Hey friends, welcome back. This is me, Monica Sharma, and welcome to MS Bio Academy. And today we are going to take a topic on cystic fibrosis and CFTR. Okay, so uh, what is this CFTR? CFTR is basically a protein which is being coded by one of the genes. So what is that CFTR protein is, and what is that gene that we are going to cover up in this particular video? All right, so let's begin. So what do you mean by cystic fibrosis? Cystic fibrosis is basically an autosomal recessive disorder and this is mainly a disease uh, disorder which occur in the lungs mainly okay and also intestine all right then a uh, liver kidney so uh, the epithelial lining of these uh, organs is getting affected by means of a cystic fibrosis so what happens in the cystic fibrosis is actually there is a cystic as the word suggests it means a uh, some fluid kind of sac sac is there okay fluid sac fluid filled sac and fibrosis means uh, some connective tissues okay connective tissues are being formed so here what happen is normally this is a cell and uh, let's suppose this is an epithelial cell and what happened uh, is uh, epithelial cells when the secretion will go outside so that secretion will form a mucus so mucus contains normally water in them okay so that's why they are they are able to they are very thin okay they are thin in nature so uh, what happen is like for example if we consider the lungs in the lungs if we talk about it uh, there is a epithelial lining contains the cilia and the movement of these cilia is very much essential for these mucus to flow keep on flowing okay so that this mucus can uh, whatever bacteria is uh, trapped in this mucus they will also be removed from this lungs by means of a ciliary movement so that's why the mucus movement is very much essential by means of cilia but what happen uh, sometimes uh, there is a uh, this mucus becomes very thick all right so that means the water content has been moved inside the cell and this mucus has become very thick in nature now due to the thickness what will happen it will become very heavy so the cilia will not be able to move them in a normal way and this may lead to a deposition of mucus layer everywhere lining the epithelial cells of the lungs intestine liver and the kidney and uh, uh, this uh, mucus then uh, since we said the mucus is mainly what it do it uh, trap the bacteria here so uh, the bacteria uh, this uh, will keep on increasing here okay the bacterial population and this will lead to a certain kind of a bacterial infection or secondary infections right so this condition is known as a cystic fibrosis so this is what happened in the cystic fibrosis and this is a very serious condition okay so because this may lead to a various kind of a respiratory uh, congestion and uh, or maybe some uh, as i've said uh, uh, bacterial infection may lead which may degrade the epithelial layer of these organs or the tissues right so this is certain uh, certainly a very uh, dangerous situation right now why this cystic fibrosis how does this cause what it leads that uh, this thing happens so uh, as i'm saying that this is a autosomal recessive disorder that means some kind of a gene is responsible for this particular disorder all right so that gene is known as the cftr gene now the, there is a gene uh, uh, mutation happens in this particular gene which is the cftr gene so if this is a chromosome all right so on the long arm of the chromosome and this chromosome this gene is present on the chromosome number 7 all right the cftr gene is present on the chromosome number 7 and that too on the long arm of the chromosome number 7 so the position of this uh, uh, gene on the long arm of the chromosome you can uh, just memorize that it is q31.2 okay, so this position where the cftr gene is present in the chromosome number that is q31.2 and if there is certain kind of a mutation happens in this gene so this gene uh, will lead to the condition which is known as a cystic fibrosis now why is it so again uh, why this mutation lead to a cystic fibrosis because this gene is actually responsible for coding a protein which is known as a cftr protein the full form of which is cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator okay very big 
uh, full form right i know uh, so this is one of the protein which the cftr gene is going to code what is the role of this uh, cftr uh, protein is that it is present as a transmembrane channel in a cells okay so if this is the epithelial cell uh, one of the epithelial cells so they are present in the form of a channel transmembrane channel that means it is embedded within the membrane cell membrane and uh, they act as a channel channel for movement of the chloride ions in and out of the cell so they are basically involved in the chloride ion channel you can say now why this chloride ion channel is very much important what happen is uh, this uh, uh, cell uh, should have a channel so that these chloride ions can move and out of the cell now i have told you here that uh, the secretions these epithelial cells which they are going to secrete this will form a mucus now mucus is normally a thin in nature okay, so if this is the mucus which is being formed this is normally thin in nature that is the water is more in this so this is actually a normal condition which is required but what will happen if let's suppose there is a mutation happen in the cftr gene in chromosome number 7 and this may lead to a formation of uh, wrong formation of the cftr protein okay wrong formation means maybe its function is not properly now uh, going to occur in the cell membrane it is not going to properly channelize the chloride ions now or maybe it may happen that the cftr protein will not form at all okay so what will happen all these condition will lead to what there will be a no chloride ion channel uh, gradient will be formed okay so this may lead to what things now you know that uh, in the cell membrane there are some other pumps are also present other transporter channels are also present for example sodium ion channel right so sodium ion channel uh, since this is a sodium is the positively charged and chloride we know it is a negatively charged so we know that for a cell to remain in the homeostasis condition what it needs to do it needs to balance this gradient of positive and negative ions right so this chloride ion channel if it is of getting affected it is going to indirectly affect or directly affect the sodium ion channel also right so there will be a imbalance or you can say the gradient will not be proper on either side of the cell so this will lead to what this will lead to the movement of this water molecules inside the cell right when water will move uh, from the secretion inside the cell what will happen the mucus will become very 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 thick the condition which i explained it to you here so this will lead to the all that mucus will not be able to be swiped out by the cilia and uh, that's why the bacterial infection will grow there this will lead to a cystic fibrosis right so that is how the this protein the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance protein is actually essential uh, in the cell membrane so that this the uh, disease or disorder should not occur now uh, i have told you that this disorder is due to the mutation in the cftr gene now there are some thousands of mutations have been founded out till now uh, among them the most common one is the delta f502 this is the most common uh, form of a uh, mutation which is being found now here the delta means the deletion okay and f stands for the phenyl aniline so f stands for phenyl alanine that is the amino acid which is missing here in this particular protein which is being coded by the mutated cftr gene all right so there must be a, there is a deletion happens in the three nucleotides are being deleted the whole sequence of the cftr gene here on chromosome number 7 and uh, this will lead to the uh, uh, missing of the amino acid which is phenylalanine and now 508 means this phenylalanine uh, which is going to be pr uh, actually needs to be synthesized this is present at the position number 508 okay so this 508 amino acid is missing in case of a mutated delta f508 kind of a mutation which happens in the cftr gene i hope till now this is clear right now apart from this delta f508 mutation which is commonly found uh, as a cftr mutation uh, there are other commonly found mutations uh, which are responsible for this uh, cystic fibrosis disease is the C g542x and then one more is g double five one d so these are all the common sort of uh, mutation which happens in the cftr gene and this will lead to a cystic fibrosis due to the either due to the non formation of the cftr protein 
ओके ट्रांसमेम्ब्रीन प्रोटीन द क्लोराइड एंड ट्रांसमेम्ब्रीन चैनल और इधर दैट प्रोटीन इज फॉर्म्ड बट इट इज नॉट फंक्शनल ओके दैट मीन्स इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू डू इट्स जॉब विच इज द क्लोराइड एंड ग्रेडियन रेगुलेशन दैट इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू डू सो दिस थिंग मे लीड नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट वॉट इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोटीन विच वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द चैनल प्रोटीन सी एफ टी आर प्रोटीन सो बेसिकली दिस ट्रांसमेम्ब्रेन दिस इज अ ट्रांसमेम्ब्रेन प्रोटीन सो लेट्स मेक अ सेल मेम्ब्रेन हेयर फर्स्ट सो दिस इज द सेल मेम्ब्रेन लेट्स सपोज और राइट एंड हेयर द सी एफ टी आर प्रोटीन इज बेसिकली द सी एफ टी आर प्रोटीन इज अ मल्टी प्रोटीन ओके मल्टी प्रोटीन यू कैन से दैट मीन और यू कैन से इट इज मेडअप ऑफ सम मल्टीपल ऑफ डोमेन्स ओके सो मेनी डोमेन्स आर प्रेजेंट ऑन इट इट इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स स्ट्रक्चर इज देयर फॉर सी एफ टी आर सो आई विल ट्राई टू सिंप्लीफाई इट फॉर यू फॉर योर एक्सप्लेनेशन सो how it start is uh, there are some six helical alpha helix are there which are present uh, in the membrane okay so they are transmembrane present uh, six helices it goes like this this is helix number 1 2 3 4 now fifth one and this is the sixth one so that is how it goes so you can say what are uh, what is this this is the trans i'll write it down here transmembrane domain one because there is one more transmembrane domain over this side in between it will form a one loop okay so in the loop also there are certain domains are present that are going and that i'm going to explain it to you so this is transmembrane domain one so in short we can write it as tmd1 let's write it down like this way now we know that peptide uh, the one end contains an h2 and the other end contains coh right so let's suppose this is an h2 one after this what will come now after this there will be a one domain is present now this domain is called as the nucleotide binding domain so we can write it down as nbd1 domain this is also because it is present two uh, nbd1 is also present nbd2 is also present so we'll write uh, nucleotide binding domain one all right so this is there present then just after this in this loop only there is one more domain is present which is known as the regulatory domain now this regulatory domain is very much important why this is important because the phosphorylation of this particular regulatory protein only decides whether this channel protein of cftr needs to be open or it is needs to be closed okay so it entirely depend on this domain which is the regulatory domain so next after this uh, what is present next after this is protein r is six helix helix uh, thing it's transmembrane domain 1 with a six alpha helix so one then two three four then 5 and 6 like this it is present so this is a complete transmembrane only okay they are embedded in the membrane see it like this this is actually a complete thing this is a membrane is complete all right so the this channel is present over here now after this what it is present so this we can say this again as the same transmembrane domain 2 now we can write it out down as tmd2 now after this there is a one more domain is present which is the yes this this one so this is nbd2 okay so nucleotide binding domain 2 is present over this side after this there is a one more is present which is pdz domain okay this is the last pdz pdz domain is present basically pdz domain is mainly responsible uh, to be attached with uh, the cytoskeleton of the cell okay so you might be knowing that a cell normally have uh, uh, maintain its shape because of the cytoskeleton which is holding its and maintaining its uh, structure so these cytoskeleton they are actually being uh, interacting here the pdz so that is the role of the pdz domain here of the so that it can intact here uh, this uh, cftr uh, protein structure completely in a uh, cell membrane it, this is the uh, basic structure of the cftr protein hope this is simplified to you now easy now what will happen how this uh, cftr is channel is open and closed how it is being activated and deactivated activation as i told you this regulatory domain is very very important here only when this regulatory domain is being phosphorylated all right when it is phosphorylated by means of an enzyme known as 
protein kinase A. Okay, so here what all enzymes are involved in this? Let PKA and PKC. So these are the two enzymes which are going to come and phosphorylate this dilatory domain of CFTR. When this is phosphorylated, then this channel is being activated. The activation will lead to what? Bring this NBD1 and NBD2 closer. Okay, so this will lead to the activation and the channel will be open then. And so the chloride ions can move inside and outside. So that's how the activation and all these domains, how they are responsible, how they are involved in the channel opening and channel closing, or you can say the channel activation or the protein activation and protein deactivation. That's how it is involved. Well, uh, till the time this regulatory domain is not being phosphorylated, it is not being activated. So the channel remain closed that time okay so that is how this whole thing happens that is all about the cftr you guys and uh, very important thing i need to mention it here that uh, this why the cftr study is very much important because uh, there is a one question which come recently in our csir uh, net life science 2009 19 examination and uh, uh, also there is a one more question in 2015 also it has come like in 2015 the question was uh, uh, that uh, cftr is known to control the transport of which ion so now you must be knowing that it is going to control the transport of chloride ions and in csr net 2019 the question has come like uh, uh, there is a one patient is being diagnosed with the uh, it is complaining he is complaining for vomiting and diarrhea and the uh, doctor has suggested him to take a glucose and electrolyte solution and uh, then you have to uh, find out that uh, which among the options were given the four options were given in which transport of protein were mentioned there so you have to take that that which particular protein is responsible for rehydrating the patient in that particular condition so in that uh, the one of the option was cftr so uh, i have discussed i have made a separate video also on that so if you want to get the clarification on that and you want to know what question was it exactly so you can uh, go to my uh, ch uh, channel page and you can search uh, for the CSI 2019 question there uh, you will find this particular question with an answer and explanation also so that's why uh, this topic is very essential uh, with respect to the competitive exams right so that's all for today so thank you so much for watching if you have any queries related to or any other uh, topic please do let me know in the comment section down below and please 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 do subscribe for my channel ms bio academy so thank you so much bye